How's it going, everybody? This is Gary, Prophecy Son. We are on with Cassie McWilliams from the Saddle Ranch Show here on SonOfHollywood.com. How are you doing, Cassie? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good, good. All right, so tell us, uh, when did you start working for Saddle Ranch? I started working at the Universal Location in City Walk um, about two years ago now. Cramped. <laughs> wow, that's a long time. Yeah, I've been with the company for a while. I had a, you know, a three-month hiatus last summer and then came back because I missed it. Okay, so let's see. So you had a three-month hiatus last summer. You came back because you missed it, and you've been there for two years, and you started yep. at the City Walk location. So when did the show start happening? Like, when did you start hearing talks about the show, and all of that was in development, and, and when did all that begin? Uh, probably... A little over a year ago is when we first started hearing little rumors trickle down. They went through a couple different selection processes and a couple different interview section or selections with different um, production company meetings and stuff like that until we settled with Bruno and Murray and worked out a contract and deal with them. Um, so there, there has been in the process for a while, and you know, a lot of people kind of said it's never really going to happen. It's just talks, and then all of a sudden we got phone calls saying, "Hey, you start filming in three weeks." <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So, obviously not everybody got to be a part of the show. Uh, what was the actual process that it took before people at Saddle Ranch and Buna Murray decided on which staff members to use for the show? You know, I'm not sure what their criteria was. Um, I know that at first we had to, I believe, email like um, a picture and, you know, a little blurb about ourselves. And then we had um, meetings or an open interview with um, some of the production ca uh, production team at Sunset, at the Sunset location, um, and that was a while back. I went in with my roommate at the time, um, uh, Dominic, and, you know, after that, there was, you know, a break. We hadn't heard anything for probably about a month and a half, and then we started getting a little bit of, oh, did you hear back from them? Did you hear back from them? Well, so-and-so heard back, and, um, and then it was drawn out for another couple months. We came in, went to Adam and Murray, met with their team, um, and then again, it was like another month and a half before anybody heard anything. We got another phone call, went in and met with a different pro um, producer from Dear and Murray. Then again, it was like another month, and then finally, we finally got a phone call saying, hey, be at sunset at this time. Um, at this, by this point, we still, we knew that the show had been picked up, but we didn't know who the cast was. So then we all met at sunset. There was probably about 20 of us. And they went through the ins and outs of how it was going to work without saying who the cast was. And then at the very end of the meeting, they listed off the um, eight people that were the main cast. And then straight from there, we went over to do a little, do a little medical check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, part of the requirements of reality shows, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so basically, so what you're telling me is you had a, a group of 20 people who were all staff members of Saddle Ranch. And basically, they eliminated 12 of the 20 people right before your very eyes. Well, I believe they actually started off with much more, um, because I know at the open call, um, the very first one, there was probably, I would say, 50 or 60 people. And wow. I think they cut it down to you know the top 20. They sent those 20 through a, a next um, interview process, on-camera interview, and then they cut it down to the eight or ten that we were left with. Wow. So after that happened, uh, before you guys started filming, was there, um, you know, uh, uh, changes in the dynamic of the staff? Was there, like, jealousy and backstabbing or hatred and, and all of that going on? I don't think that there was any outright hatred or anybody that said anything negative. There, were a lot, there was a lot of eye-rolling, and there was a lot of people like, oh, this is so stupid, I can't believe that they're actually doing this. Um, you know, and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that, yeah, maybe somebody wasn't selected and they wanted to be, so they they were taking it out on the wrong people. Um, there were some people that were concerned on how it was going to affect their shifts and if they were going to get cut down on the shifts or uh -huh. if the cameras were going to be in their way or, you know, whatnot. Um, so there was, there was definitely some negative vibes coming off of some people. I don't think any of it caused any huge issues. Um, and then, you know, there's there's been a couple people that were rolling their eyes at first, and as soon as those cameras were on, they were in the background, you know, waving to mama, like trying to get in every single shot possible, and all of a sudden, it wasn't such a bad idea. <laughs> right. So everybody still wanted to somehow try to figure out a way to get a piece, even though they weren't yeah. part of the actual uh, cast members. Yeah, there were a couple people that, that definitely played a little switch on that. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, where exactly are you from? I'm from right outside Seattle. 
Okay, and did you come to Los Angeles with any intent of breaking into the entertainment industry at all? Um, I came down here right after high school to be a dance major at Loyola Marymount University. Okay. Um, and at that point, dance was my focus. Okay. So I, I did come down here to, to pursue dance and to um, you know further my dance education. And then I transferred to the University of Texas, where in Austin they have absolutely no dance scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then I missed it and came back. <laughs> so you just caught your lucky break out here at Saddle Ranch, huh? Yeah, yeah, wasn't expecting it. I don't think any of us were. <laughs> well, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and congratulations on that, by the way. Uh, Thank you. Right place, right time. So tell us about, okay, so you guys have been filming the show for how long now? Um, we're done with the filming. Um, it was essentially about a seven-week film process. Um, and it was almost daily, you know, I, I had to quit my other job because I couldn't lock down a set schedule with them because they could be like, you know, we need you working or, right. you know, like, so we picked up a lot of shifts, um, because they wanted to get, make it look like, you know, it was a longer process, a longer film. And so people who are typically working, you know, three nights a week, all of a sudden were working five or six nights a week. Okay. So, it, you know, it, it definitely took up a lot of time. We definitely got to know each other on a different basis. Um, you know, friendship wise and new people were brought in and stuff like that. And, it, you know, it's. It was very hectic, and it, it was stressful, but it was fun. Definitely worth it in the end, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. So, okay, now, when the camera started coming on, and, of, of course, obviously, you know, the work dynamic probably changed a little bit. Tell me some of the positive changes as a result of the camera crew and, of course, the production company stepping in and probably having their say-so in the way things were going down. Tell us some of the positive changes that you uh, were experiencing as a result of the filming as well as some of the negative changes. Oh, my God. Um, positive, for sure, tips. I mean, to be completely honest, I mean, I was a shot girl, so I'm, everybody at, at the restaurant makes their money off of tips, no matter what anybody thinks, and it's very frustrating when you get people in there that don't realize that and um, don't, you know, tip you for what you're doing, tip you for the work that you're doing. So when there's a camera on you and a light following you, nobody wants to look like that jackass that doesn't tip. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I was, I was going from getting zero tips for people to getting $5 tips. Wow. So they just didn't want to look like that cheap ass. And, you know, I thought about just hiring a friend for the night, falling around with a big, big old light and see what happens. Because I actually made very, very good money during filming. And I think I might have been one of um, the only people, because I heard a lot of people bitching about, you know, how I was getting in the way. And I was like, it's helping me out. I have no problem with it. Keep them around as long as you can. So, so really, before filming, you were, you were getting a lot of cheapskates, and after filming, as a result, you were seeing the people being put on the spot were actually trying to act as if they were big ballers. Exactly. exactly. That's, that's <laughs> hilarious. Now, what about, yeah. the, what about the negative changes? What, what were some of the things that, that you saw being affected as a result of the filming that you really didn't like? You know, there, there really isn't, isn't that much, you know, we, we had fun with it, um, we definitely saw different sides of people, so I guess you could say that that's negative, but at the same time it's just really prepping us for what they were really like, um, before, you know, before the cameras were on, after the cameras were on, during the camera filming and everything, um, other than that, we, we, get, we get fans in all the time that want to take pictures, they're like, oh my god, you actually work here, and that's funny thing, because we get, we get questions, I get questions that almost daily. Do you really work at Saddle Ranch? You actually work there? I'm like, yes. That's <laughs> I awesome. I do. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I was at the uh, I was at the OK Sexy Single Party at the Lexington Social House uh, in Hollywood a couple weeks ago, or like maybe a month or so back. And uh -huh. your whole staff, everybody who was a part of the show, was over there at the red carpet. And you guys actually looked like you guys were like a great team. You know, you guys, you know, seemed to get along really well and were very happy. Um, what would you say uh, happened to the group of people who were cast members that were part of the show? Like, how did you guys grow together as a, a group, as friends? Well, you know, we, we didn't start off all on the same foot. You know, there was, there was a lot of animosity when it came to bringing Rob, Ray, uh, Rob Cameron and I over from Universal. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were confused as to why we were there, thought we were there to steal their shifts, thought we were better than them, you know, things like that. So it really wasn't until we had a party at Rob's house and I threw a beer on a stripper where people started actually coming together. And a lot of it had to do with the alcohol, and we just kind of said, fuck it, you know, if we have to be with each other almost daily to to work like why not make the most of it why why should we hate each other so um after that you know there there are cliques 
There are definitely cliques. There are definitely people that have changed a little bit. I'm, I'm sure I'm guilty of it just as, just as well as the next person. There are people that, you know, have floated on into outer space. Um, but, you know, for the most part, we will, we will be behind each other. It just, it goes in and out, you know. Everybody says we're a dysfunctional family, and we are to a point, but I think a lot of it has to do with, with people being fake and people using other people for their connections and stuff like that, which sucks. But I guess, essentially, that's what happens in a family as well. Yeah, right, for sure.